Hey guys, today is Labor Day 2012 and put a timestamp on this. Uh, yesterday being Sunday, the cup race in Atlanta last night, Denny Hamlin won it and uh, we don't want to talk about Tony Stewart. He didn't do so well. But it's hot in here. I'm probably a few weeks early on this lettuce, I know, but I'm going to try to figure out a way to get the reservoir temperatures down so this lettuce is going to do what it's supposed to do and see if I can get similar results to what I had back in the uh, late spring uh, when I had the nice big heads of lettuce in here. I'm going to try to do it again and uh, mix in some pak choy as well. You can see what I'm working on so far. Went ahead, I got some of them in the cups. They're going to be wilted for the next few days. I know that. That's what happened the first time. And if I can just keep them, keep them watered, maybe try to keep the sun off of them a little bit, I might stand a chance. And what I'm doing right down here, I got my little seedlings in my uh, nine packs and separating them then we just dip them in the water to get the uh, dirt off the roots and then uh, put the hydrotin in the cups and fill them up I'll show you what I'm doing and this is the lettuce right here my Adriana have been in these little uh, trays way too long uh, just too hot in here I actually took them inside the last couple of days so you just stick them in some water down here you're trying to get the uh, dirt and stuff off the roots if you leave a little bit here and there I don't think it's the end of the world and then I'm going to take my little neck cup, give me some of this, uh, I was calling it hydrotin. It's actually hydroton, I think, the way you pronounce it. Just call it little clay pebbles. Put that in here, finish the filling the cup up. It looks about like that right there. And what I had done, I put the pebbles in a bucket of water yesterday and made sure that they were nice and wet so when I got ready to put these things in they'd already had the moisture in the pebbles. If you didn't want to go out and buy the net cups what you could do is take these little nine ounce cups right here and take you a soldering gun, soldering iron and punch you a bunch of holes in it. So you end up about like this punch a bunch of holes on the side and then same thing down in the bottom and the way this works, this will actually match up right here with this. When you put it in the rails, it'll come about to the same thing. You end up with the same depth. And you have just a little bit taller lip up top, which is really not a bad thing to have. So I'm going to use this on a few applications just to see how it does. And then all I'm doing, I'm going to just set it down in here and put my little dripper on it. And I got the drippers on it right now. Uh, generally, the longer this thing runs, these things will kind of start to clog up a little bit. You have to take the ends of them off and clean them out. I'll probably switch everything over to just uh, an open end right here. It'd be a lot easier to work with. But put the dripper on there and that's it. This third rail right here is going to be a little bit different. The first two, I have a dripper at each cup. I'm going to do this some more like a NFT and that I'll have more nutrient in the bottom of this. What I have done this is my piece of pipe and I've got a hole measured right here that should correspond to the bottom of the cups. So I'll adjust it whichever way I need to. I just want about a quarter inch of water up at the bottom of the cups. So that way the hydrotin will be wet. It'll wick the moisture up to the roots and instead of having water coming in from the top, it'll be down at the bottom. And after this thing gets on up where I don't need that much water in it, I can actually pull it out, flip it over, and I've got holes drilled a little bit lower where I can actually drop the water level if I need to. And like a typical NFT setup that has the nutrients flowing from all of one end, I've got two lines right here just stuck in this hole for now. They will actually go in these slots right over here and uh, take care of that, getting the water to that side. That way, I'll just have these two take care of the nutrients as opposed to one for each cup. We'll just try and see how it goes. All right, today is Tuesday, September 11th, 9-11, 2012. Right now, it's time to take a look at this lettuce. Been eight days now since I put it in here and doing pretty good. It was really hot last week. I had to uh, add some ice to the uh, reservoir, try my best to get the temperatures down, try to help it out some. But for just the first eight days of growth, that's not too bad right there. That Black Cedar Simpson is not known for being a warm weather lettuce. But I figured I would try it anyway. We got cooler weather now, down to 52 degrees last night in here. So that was nice, real nice. And this is one that I put in the little clear plastic cups. See the roots coming out down there looking real nice and clean. 
Wish I had some more holes to make them easier to come out, but I think they'll be fine. On, the, on this back rail right here, this is the pak choy. That's a gorgeous little plant right there. The roots just as clean, water inside, crystal clear. Doing exactly what it's supposed to. I like that. You notice some of that lettuce kind of flopping over a little bit. That's what happens when you, uh, you let your transplants get too big before you start them, before you put them in your net cups. You only have an inch or two to work with inside that cup. And if you got a three or four inch stem, that's a problem. I was late putting them in, but actually I started the seed too early. That's what it was. I put them in there uh, as soon as I felt like the temperature was getting close to where they wouldn't just flat out die from the heat. I'll start some more here in another day or so, just in case something goes wrong with these. But I think they'll lay here on the top of the rail, even with a longer stem, and go ahead and make a head of lettuce. We're going to find out. Just like the first setup, haven't changed anything. Same air pump, got two lines coming out of it. Inside the reservoir, same deal. There's a little two inch stone and a little bit bigger four inch. And they do a real good job of aerating that water. Same 264 pump in here pumping through it. The only thing different about this one than it was the first time was the addition of the third rail and setting that up so it actually held more nutrients in there. This is an 18 gallon tote that I have on these three. And what I did when I started, I went ahead and put 20 gallons in here. Not all at one time, I put the first 15 and because I knew it was gonna take some water to fill up the two inches or so in the back rail, went ahead and started it with 20 gallons. And the first eight days I haven't done anything yet other than maybe add some ice to it. Inside this greenhouse, I have the ability to heat it, raise the temperature, but when it comes to cooling it down, that's a big problem. So what I decided to do on this stuff right here to try to cool these reservoir temps a little bit, when it got so hot, get me a bottle of, uh, well, this says Simply Orange, whatever, freeze it, drop it down in there. And this one right here, um, I'm a Pepsi drinker myself. I don't know how in the world we ended up with a Coke bottle in here. I reckon uh, Coke Man 250 been playing around my greenhouse, I reckon. I'm going to have to keep an eye on him. You just take this thing, set it on down in there. How much does it help? Well, I can't say for sure because I don't come out here and take a before and after temperature, but I know it has to help some. It can't hurt it none, that's for sure. I'm going to talk about the fertilizer right here for a minute because that's one of the things that so many people ask about exactly what are you using. There's a lot of things you can use for uh, hydroponics. You can go get the little bottles of the ones you, when it's blooming, you put this in there. Then when it starts to set fruit, you put this in there. And then if the pH goes down, you add this. And the pH goes up, you add that. Uh, hogwash. I ain't interested in all that stuff. I'm trying to keep it simple. I don't have all the fancy equipment to calibrate the nutrients and things like that. Uh, frankly, I ain't interested in it. I just want something that works, and that's what I'm going to stick with. And that's what I found right here. Now... I go ahead and uh, approach this topic as far as using compost tea. The thing with compost tea is simply this. If you make your tea out of uh, rabbit manure and I make my tea out of horse manure, is there a difference there? Yes, there is quite a bit of difference. There's going to be no consistency from one batch to the next. When you're growing vegetables hydroponically, you need to be consistent. It's easier to start with a defined product and then maybe make some uh, minor adjustments to that. This right here is a 25 pound, well it used to be, of Master Blend. It's a 41838 tomato special fertilizer. Water soluble, specifically for hydroponics. It has the nitrogen, the phosphate, the potash, that's the NBK, NPK. And then you got the magnesium, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc. All of those micronutrients, they are in here too. This is some good stuff. In order to make this a complete fertilizer, you need to add Epsom salt. And you need to add calcium nitrate. When you do that, based on their mixed ingredients, you come up with a, a full fertilizer right there. You can adjust it somewhat uh, to cut back the ratio, which is what I do. I found out that using this on my tomatoes, I would do a 12-12-6. 
using grams. You got to get your little digital scale. This is 12 grams of a fertilizer, 12 grams calcium nitrate, 6 grams of Epsom salt. That's what I grew the tomatoes in. The lettuce, I don't need quite so much uh, fertilizer in there. Uh, the nutrients, so I cut it back to about 10, 10, 5, and that seemed to work just fine. The other thing, you want to make sure that these bags are sealed up, airtight, keep your containers closed because they will attract moisture and they will harden up like a rock. To make it easy on you, get you some small containers. That's my calcium nitrate, that's the Epsom salt, and that's my fertilizer right there. Mix those in a little bitty glass on your scale to whatever ratio you're trying to work with. And if you, if you decide that you want to try something different, adjust the levels, you know you have a, a fixed amount in this right here, 41838. You can adjust the nitrogen a little bit. You can adjust the magnesium and the sulfur a little bit. Play around with it if that's what you want to do to try growing something else. I'm going to try growing some cucumbers here shortly. Uh, see how that does with this stuff. But supposedly, should be just fine. I try to keep it simple. All right, guys, so far so good. Uh, the first eight days looking real good behind me. Not bad at all. The first time I did this, I thought it might have been beginner's luck. I really wasn't sure. But looking at it right now, uh, I think I might be onto something. It's not as complex and complicated as what I initially thought hydroponics would be. When you look at some of the videos of the commercial guys and you see all this electronic fancy equipment up on the walls and thousand gallon storage tanks and all this kind of stuff going on, looks kind of intimidating. But when you break it down to a very small scale, it's actually really simple. Mix up your nutrients, put it in the water, Turn your pump on, make sure it's aerated. That's it, doesn't get much simpler. We'll check back in about three weeks and see what I come up with. Hopefully I got a nice head of lettuce about like that. We got this cooler weather now, so uh, I might be in good shape. Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.